Back in 2017, I made what became a very popular video on how we use the ATEM switcher in conjunction with vMix to enhance our productions. Well, a lot of water's gone under the bridge since then, so I think it's time to give you an update. The pandemic affected all of our lives and the way that we work. We found ourselves working more and more with remote contributors and doing hybrid events, and that led to us building and wiring up the system very differently to we did before in order to get better resilience and better quality. Like many of us, I've learned a lot about doing remote productions over the last few years. And today, I just want to give you a little review of how we now use the system for the type of work we do today. I now have a dedicated vMix PC based around a 3.8 GHz i7 processor with an NVIDIA Quadro RTX 4000 graphics card along with a Blackmagic Decklink Duo I.O. card. And at the time of recording, I'm running vMix version 26. I found a little quirk using the Decklink Duo card. When I first boot up Windows from power down and go into vMix, I turn on the external output and I get no signal. The way I found around that is to restart Windows, go back into vMix, turn it on again, and it works absolutely fine, and that's completely repeatable. I don't know if that's a problem with Windows, with a Decklink card or a driver, but I've not been able to fix it. I have heard of other people having a similar problem too. It's a bit of a pain having to restart Windows every time, but I have got used to doing that, and it does sort the problem out 100% of the time. I now use a Samsung ultra-wide monitor with vMix. That gives me plenty of screen real estate to display all my inputs and audio mixers in a nice format. I also have a backup machine, an HP Omen laptop based around an i7, 2.6 gigahertz, and an NVIDIA RTX 2060 graphics card with Thunderbolt and USB capture devices. And both machines are running Windows 10. In the PPU rack, I still have an ATEM 1ME Production Studio 4K, several in fact, and a new ATEM 2ME Constellation HD switcher, which has scalers on every input and assignable outputs, making it extremely flexible. I also still use the Mixit switcher panel. You can see my PPU upgrade video on how I built that unit up. When we looked at the setup before, I wasn't using a Decklink card, so we were experimenting with using chroma key and green backgrounds to key the titles into the ATEM. These days, we're able to use key and fill for better results. With key and fill, I'm able to take two sources out of the Decklink card into two inputs on the ATEM. Setting these as key and fill sources in one of the keyers allows me to bring up the captions clearly over the video using transparency and transitions. So from vMix, I might typically be sending out three outputs, a key and fill for graphics, and a video output for pre-recorded VT content, and then taking one input from the ATEM into vMix of say, a program feed, which could then be used as a return feed for a remote contributor, or as a backup stream. Now we'll change the configuration depending on the job. In some cases, I've done very low budget live streams just from a laptop, taking several cameras in via capture cards, overlaying a few captions, maybe playing a video, and then streaming it all out, all from the one machine. But for much of the work I do, resilience and reliability are an important factor. Not having a single point of failure that could take the stream off air if things don't go according to plan. A good example of that came in a year or so back when we were doing a live stream by mixing the cameras directly in the ATEM PPU and outputting that to a vMix laptop, which was then overlaying graphics, playing some VT, and sending an output directly into Zoom, which was on the same machine. To our horror, about three quarters of the way through the production, our Zoom feed suddenly froze closely followed by the laptop crashing and going blue screen. Well, of course, we rebooted the entire system and tried to reconnect to Zoom as quickly as possible, but we couldn't. 
it turned out it was one of those occasions when Amazon Web Services actually had a major outage and took Zoom completely offline. Maybe not so much we can do about that, but it did highlight a problem with our system in that if the laptop were to fail, it would also take our stream off air. So now we try and work with a system that uses outputs from both the ATEM and the vMix machine in case of any problems on one side or the other. We can always switch to a live camera feed only or a backup video or a holding card if the camera side is down. And that gives us some resilience while we try and sort the problem out. Much of the time, I'm working in a studio environment where we host corporate and hybrid events. And our setup is pretty standard for that and deals with most eventualities like remote callers, VT playout, graphics, etc. In the auditorium, we typically run two to four cameras with room audio being fed into the SDI. And that goes back to our ATEM in the control room. We also take an NDI mix minus feed into vMix as a return feed for any remote contributors. Some of our more specialized projects though have some interesting examples and are worthy of a mention. On the 5G festival, we worked on a music event with over 20 musicians and singers spaced across three different locations in the UK, all playing a concert together in real time. There's about 25 songs. There's about 20 artists spread between here and London. Simon. Yes, like that. That works. Up to Henry. Henry. The complexities of playing music across three venues over high speed lines and being in time is way beyond the scope of this video. But we were taking 12 camera feeds and mixing it all together for projection mapping in our auditorium and a 7.1 surround sound live stream going out to another audience. We used the ATEM to mix six local cameras and vMix to sync up the remote video feeds with the local mix and outputting that into OBS to deal with the surround sound and the RTMP stream. Another complication was that the running order was changing right up until the final rehearsal. So we used a shared Google Sheet as a data source within vMix so as the running order and information changed, we always had the up-to-date information right there in vMix for our captions. We have 25 songs being played. At the moment, the play list order is still a little fluid, so we can bring up our titles and find whichever one we're looking for, and then I can punch them up on screen, making sure we've got the right graphics to come on screen at the right time. Another project saw us handle a live stream shortly after coming out of lockdown. The client required a signer on screen and live captions. Both providers were working remotely. We sent a real-time live mix out to both parties and received the live signer video back over a vMix call. And the live captions came in via a live text-based website that we could scrape as a data source into vMix and provide real-time captions on screen. The two remote sources were then overlaid onto the final mix and sent out as the live stream all in real time. It sounds quite complicated, but it worked flawlessly all day. Back in 2020, at the height of lockdown, we produced hours of video content over several months with individual socially distanced performers coming into our studio to perform for a three-day live stream event called Fabuloso. That went out just as lockdown ended and we were able to integrate live presenters with remote participants and audiences, along with the VT footage that we produced over the previous months to put out a 20 hour live stream over three days. There's a whole background video on that one if you're interested in seeing more about that. Each day we had over 100 VT segments to play out in the right order from vMix. We handled multiple social media channels, displaying viewer comments live on the stream and remote audience interaction. 
We really wanted to make all the viewers feel like they were very much part of the live event. So I'd just like to recap once more by saying that we find a hardware solution like the ATEM in conjunction with software like vMix a very powerful combination. And we're able to turn out very high quality productions for a fraction of the price that it would have cost just a few years ago. I hope you found this insight useful into the way we use these products and come away with some ideas that could benefit you too. As always, Feel free to drop a question or comment below and why not show your appreciation with a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to have a good rummage through our camera and tech playlist to see if there's anything else that's useful in there for you too. And I'll catch up with you next time.